scientist I chose was Elizabeth Binder. It was difficult to find specific information regarding her childhood and how she exactly became involved in science. However, it is obvious that she has a true passion for science. She earned an MD at the University of Vienna in Austria in 1995, while also doing work at the University Libre in Belgium. During this time, she took a psychiatry class that was far from typical. The class focused on the genetics behind psychiatry, which really sparked her interest. She eventually earned a PhD in neuroscience in 2000 at the University of Emory in Atlanta, Georgia. Her main research while earning her PhD focused on how certain neuropeptides affect antipsychotic drugs. From the sources I read, it was not clear what her interesting hobbies are. However, it is evident that Elizabeth is a born leader and hard worker. From 2004 to 2011, she worked as a professor at Emory School of Medicine in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. In 2013 and up to now, she has been working at the Department of Translational Research in Psychiatry at the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry. She has received countless awards such as the Theodore Reach Young Investigator Award and the Max Hamilton Award. I admire Elizabeth because she works to improve the lives of individuals, specifically in terms of their mental health. She is working to find biology-based treatments for mood disorders like depression. I think her work is admirable because it is relevant in our society today. Mental health is definitely an issue that is overlooked and needs to be focused on because each day people are suffering due to these disorders. These people deserve to be treated and living happier lives. Elizabeth Binder is interested in biology that correlates with psychiatry. The type of biology that she combines with psychiatry is mostly genetics. Her main goal is to uncover the biological pathways at the molecular and cellular level that underlie anxiety and mood disorders like depression and stress in order to create treatments that aid in curing these diseases. She desires to discover treatments that are based on biology rather than on symptoms alone. Her research is attempting to answer many questions that are rooted in the biological mechanisms that cause these detrimental diseases. Some of the questions she's trying to answer are, how is an individual's response to challenging life circumstances affected by genetics? How does the FKBP5 gene affect the stress of an individual? How are the biological features of patients possessing similar symptoms alike? And finally, how does the environment and development of an individual affect mood disorders? The most recent paper that Elizabeth was an author on is called A Functional Variant in the Serotonin Receptor 7 Gene is Associated with Good Response to SSRIs in Bipolar and Unipolar Depression. The purpose of the experiment performed was to help understand antidepressant response and its connection to mood disorders like depression. The first experiment involved sequencing the whole HCR7 gene, including the regulatory sequences, to research the variants in the gene and how they are affected by serotonin inhibitors. This was accomplished via a pooled sequencing strategy. Then, the first part of this experiment was repeated, but with two samples from SSRI treated depression suffering patients. Later on, electrophoretic mobility shift to say was used to investigate an allele and its interaction with a protein transcription factor. Elizabeth has discovered that the FKBP5 gene, which regulates stress response, has significant impacts on stress and can be easily disturbed. If disturbed at early childhood by stressful events such as abuse, this gene will not function properly and has negative implications. It can lead to severe disorders like depression and PTSD. Elizabeth is thrilled that this progress has been made. Elizabeth and her colleagues have confidently stated that, quote, the FKPB5 presents the possibility to better understand the molecular and cellular factors contributing to a disease-relevant gene by environment interaction with implications for the development of biomarkers and interventions for psychiatric disorders. Now, she's focused on understanding the connection between the environment that causes stress, genes, and the epigenome. Her goal is to accomplish this by accumulating various unique cells and exposing them to stress hormones at different times of development. Overall, I really enjoyed learning about Elizabeth.